Hello everyone, this is Jasmina, and in this video I'm going to talk about how to create a flying star chart. Now, it's actually not that hard. Most people use a calculator. That's totally fine. But this is for the people who really want to know how a flying star chart is created. So you basically only need two pieces of information to create a flying star chart. You have to know the facing direction of your building, if it's a house or it's an apartment or a condo, same kind of rules apply. And of course, you have to know which subsector the facing direction is in. And you know, you need to know the period of your house or, your, or the building, if it's an apartment or a condo. Now, most of the time, houses face the road. Uh, it basically, a building will face the most yang side and most of the time that's the road but there are exceptions you can have it face a different direction if you have let's say a lake or a large open space that uh, is in a different direction oftentimes it's like in the back of the house occasionally it could be on the side uh, but this is the times when maybe your facing direction isn't towards the road now, apartments in dense areas, in big cities, you know, high-rise apartments, they might have more difficulty in identifying the facing direction. Typically, it is still the most yang side, but depending on the circumstances or the shape of the building, sometimes it's determined by where the main door is, where pedestrian traffic enters uh, the apartment building. If you have difficulty with this, you can contact a practitioner because this can be tricky, but for most people it is not. That is, their situation is quite clear. Now, houses can change periods relatively easily, but apartments or condos rarely change periods. And that's because of the requirements to change the periods. The, uh, uh, for apartments and condos, the period will be the period of time by the day, you know, um, when the first occupants moved into any part of that apartment building. Your unit could be, you know, in a, the first people could go into your particular unit of the apartment even years later. I mean, that's kind of rare, but that could be in a later period. It doesn't matter. It's that first occupant that determines the building's period because it's the occupation of the building that um, creates the last like key to turn and determine the period. Now foreclosures of a house often result in period changes because it takes so long to resolve and no one lives in the house during that time and so uh, that is something that you want to look into if you're buying a house. Uh, oftentimes you can research the history of your house if you live in a place that keeps decent records. There are some countries that you know you can't tell but um, you can usually ask neighbors and things like this if you can't get any other kind of information. Now there are ways to change the period of any building um, and they will occur under these, one of these, it doesn't have to be all, on one of these conditions are usually enough to change the period of the building. That is, no one is in the building for 90 consecutive days. Now, you can see why in an apartment or a condo, this is tough, because there is somebody renting somewhere unless a very big disaster happens and the apartments have to be rebuilt and every apartment gets open to the outside because of the damage that was done or something like this. Uh, if you have a house and you are, let's say, you go to uh, live in a, another location and you don't want to rent your house out to others, if people aren't living there and um, you maybe, maybe you have a family member or friend just, you know, check on the house once or twice in a month, where they just, uh, yep, nothing doesn't look broken into, they just leave, that's okay. It's not, they're not there long enough to activate anything. And they're not living there. 
The other one is if the entire roof is removed at the same time down to the trusses or the rafters. Some houses have trusses, others have rafters, and then the roof is replaced. Now this really only applies to houses. And that's because in a house, even if it has multiple stories, there's staircases that connect it. And usually the staircases don't have doors. And even if they did, they're interior doors where the air can move through. So uh, this is not like an apartment building. So uh, you might actually, if you were to do this in an apartment building, maybe the top floor would have its period change but not any of the other floors. And so usually you just say, no, it doesn't change the period. Now, when I say you go down to the trusses, what you need to understand is roughly how a house is built. You have some structure that creates a roof. Those are the trusses or the rafters. Then you put wooden, uh, like plywood or sometimes particle board on top of those trusses and you nail those pieces of wood to the trusses. Uh, this is, this pieces of wood are called the decking. And then after the decking, you add some waterproof paper. And then on top of that, you add your finished thing, whether it's shingles or, or, um, or metal roof or tiles, it doesn't matter. You have to remove the tiles. Of course, the waterproofing will go and the decking. You have to get down so that basically you see the sky between the trusses and that is what is meant and that has to be the entire roof at once so this is relatively rare um, but sometimes the roof is damaged enough that you have to do this and uh, and that is everything is just worn out now the other way to do it is if more than one third of the existing buildings living area is either added or taken away from the building and this means that a period change could occur if a very small house has a garage that is converted to living space. Or it could go the other way too, but most houses that are very small don't have garages. So this would be quite rare, but I don't want to say it can't happen. So uh, the there will be three numbers in each of these sectors of a flying star chart. And the biggest number here uh, is, is associated with the house period. And it's that the period of the house, whatever that period is, is the number that gets placed here in the center. And this one will always fly in the forward low shoe path. So I'm showing you the forward low shoe path here. So it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. I can do this in my sleep because I've done it so many times. So this is where we start. So let's fill it out. We have nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we're back to eight. So that's simple. Now it gets a little trickier. What we need to do is place whatever one of these stars on the outside here, where the door is located, uh, we have to place that star, well, not where the door is, where the facing direction is located, we have to place that star on the upper right, and then in the sitting one, it goes on the upper left. So let's say we face east. So this is the facing direction. This six has to go up here. Now the one will actually go up here, but let me show you a different example. Let's say it's northeast facing. So now there's the two here, so the two goes up here. And again, the sitting is always opposite the facing sector. That's, and it doesn't matter if that's missing from your house, you still put the number in. So here is five that goes to here because they're opposite one another. And, and it's that simple. So you can do that for any of these, any of these directions, that is. Now, here's where we have to worry about exactly which subsector the building faces. And you can do that by looking, by finding the facing direction. It'll have an angle to it. And there are tables that have given you that will tell you which 
face which direction it faces so it's not terribly hard um, you just have to look it up now the key is you want to look at the center star that is here the number eight and remember this is the period of the house too just so you keep that in mind if the number is odd and the facing direction is in the subsector one you fly these two stars the the facing and sitting stars forward and if it's subsector two or three you do it in reverse if the star is even which is our case here it's eight then if it's in subsector one you fly it in the reverse direction if it's subsector two or three you fly it in the forward direction and i've given you the forward the forward and the reverse low shoe pass here now the reason why many people maybe not all call this the facing direction is it comes from the facing sector and this is the sitting direction because it comes from the sitting sector that's why this is a facing star and the sitting star some people like to call it mountain star for facing and sitting star is i'm sorry it's the other way around they want to call the water star for the facing star and the mountain star for the sitting star. Um, this, to me, I get confused because there's an on mountain and on water and up mountain down water formations that require different things. And so I just find that very confusing. Since it's a facing direction, a facing star just makes more sense to me. And the sitting star and, you know, it just, to me, it's much more clear. And... I don't get confused. If, if you're okay with it, it's fine. You can call it mountain and water. I ultimately know what you mean. So here, let's look, let's start flying. So we have eight, which is an even star. We're looking at northeast one, so we have to fly in reverse. So we start with two, and then if it's two, this will be one, then nine, eight, so forth. So let's fly it. So it's one, nine eight seven six five four three and then you're back to two both of these numbers will fly in reverse because it's determined by the base star and the base star is even so we have four then three and then i just filled it out so we have two one nine eight seven six back to five so there's your chart that's all it takes let's do it for the other one so now we have again it's the base star eight is even we are in subsector two or three so we have to fly both of the numbers in the forward direction so it's two three four five six seven eight nine one back to two five six seven eight nine one two three four back to five so this is it this is the chart again it's quite simple and i did every single chart all 81 is it 81 uh ever how many no there's 144 i think whatever number of charts there's out there i did this 20 years ago so um uh, and I get I got the information from a book by Eva Wong, which I have tucked away somewhere and can no longer find. But let's compare these two. So this is period eight, northeast one facing. This is period eight, northeast two or northeast three facing. Doesn't matter which one. It'll be one or the other. And uh, they do look different, even though the center is the same. They do have different numbers. Both of these buildings have a potential to have great flying stars. This one has a, a permanent base facing combo 10. It actually also has a, um, a temporary, a one year um, or an annual uh, base sitting um, arrangement too. So that's actually quite good. Um, and uh, it also has the on mountain on water formation. This one has a permanent parent string, and it also has the up mountain down water formation. So everything but 
the combo 10 requires you to have the right landforms in the right location. So the on mountain on water needs a mountain in back, water in front. The up mountain down water needs the reverse. It needs a mountain in front and water in back. The, the parent string needs three mountains, but one mountain is actually included in the center because this is your house and you're actually, they grade the land around your house, at least most of the places, because that's the only thing that makes sense. They grade the land so it, it goes away, the water goes away from the house. So you're on a little mountain yourself. But you do need to have higher ground both in front and in back. Um, and so I think that's what it is. I actually have one that tells exactly what it is. I should be a little careful about saying that. I do have a video that describes exactly what we need, and I think it is in front and back, but um, I might be wrong. The combo 10 is the easiest. You simply cannot have a missing sector. You can have a weakened sector that is somewhat of the sector there, not all of it. Um, it does weaken the combo 10, but it's better than not having it. I mean, if it's missing, your combo 10 is destroyed. So this this is why a lot of feng shui people like to have a rectangular or a square house because you get the biggest bang for the buck. Now this one, the parent string can have a missing sector. It does weaken it, but it doesn't deactivate it. So, uh, but again, this is why people who know feng shui prefer to have somewhat boring houses uh, because they don't want to have a missing sector. Now, these two, the highlighted ones, have the capability of making all stars become timely for all periods. That makes it a permanently good house. And uh, as, long as, as long as when you need your roof replaced, you only let them take off half the roof and then replace the decking before they take the other half off, you don't change the period of your house. Uh, but they won't be happy with that, but you have to be there and make sure they do it properly. Otherwise, you could destroy this great formation. Um, or you could just be really careful and make sure that you don't need to um, change your, to replace your entire roof uh, for 180 years, which might be hard. So that's why I give you the directions how to do it without changing the period. So steps. I'll give it to you in steps. First, you determine the period of the building. Uh, this can be a little tricky in houses um, if you don't have a good, um, a good amount of information about the house, but usually uh, there is places to find that. Then also you have, um, you have to determine which subsector the facing direction of the building is. And of course you have to determine which side of the building is your facing build, the facing side of your building. Now, uh, you need to place the period star in the center of the flying star chart and fly it in the forward low shoe path. And then you place the star in the facing sector of whatever you get from step three uh, into the upper right and the sitting uh, sector into the upper left of the center sector. This is how you start everything. And then you follow the table and you have to find whether or not you're going to fly those stars forward or reverse. And um, if you do, then you just fly the two stars according to this table and you're done. It's really not that hard. So that's basically it. I'd like to thank you for watching. Please feel free to contact me here if you have questions or uh, leave a comment. And I do have a web page that can help you find your facing direction. Um, there is... Uh, under, under the calculator, there is a video, and I also have a very similar video on YouTube. And uh, I do actually, at some point, will have the facing star charts, if you really want them, in a pie chart available on this, uh, this website. But it will be a while because you have calculators. And you really don't need this. I'd like to thank you again for watching.